There has always been mystery and intrigue surrounding the coelacanth. Fossil records for this line of fish date back over 300 millions of years, and for a long time it was assumed that coelacanths had gone extinct around the same time as the dinosaurs. But in 1938, a living coelacanth was caught off the coast of South Africa. This set off a big search for more of these fish and raised important questions not only about the coelacanth's evolutionary history, but our own as well. My name is Jessica Alfoldi, and I'm part of an international team of scientists that sequenced and analyzed the genome of the African coelacanth. We've been able to answer some of the big questions surrounding coelacanths in this study. Coelacanths today resemble the skeletal remains of their 300 million year old ancestors, which have led scientists to wonder whether the coelacanth genome is more slow evolving than other land and sea vertebrates. We found that the genes overall are evolving significantly more slowly than in other vertebrates, but that the rest of the genome actually isn't evolving particularly slowly. It's just the genes. Uh, this is the first time we've really had a big enough data set to see that. During the daytime, seal cans live in sea caves, uh, 100 to 500 meters under the sea. Uh, some migrate to even deeper waters. Uh, these habitats have likely remained uh, rather unchanged over a long period of time, which may be why the seal cans have remained largely unchanged as well. So we often talk about how uh, different species change over time to adapt to new environments. And there are, of course, a few places on Earth where things may not be changing, so changes may not be needed. And the deep sea is one of them. Um, so silicon is perhaps one of these organisms that has lived in one of these non-changing, extreme places all the time. And that's why we don't see very many changes in coelacanth because there has been absolutely no need to change. Coelacanths possess some features that look oddly like those of uh, land vertebrates, such as their lobe fins, which look like the limbs of animals that live on land. There are other odd-looking fish called lungfish that also possess these lobe fins. It was a lobe fin fish that gave rise to the first uh, vertebrates that came out of the water and onto land. But until now, researchers couldn't tell whether it was the coelacanth or the lungfish, which is most closely related to today's tetrapods. We finally have an answer to the question, which species, the lungfish or the coelacanth, that is most closely related to tetrapods. And the answer now clearly is the lungfish wins. It is more closely related. It still doesn't mean that coelacanths aren't important, but lungfish are our most closely related ancestors. The lungfish may be more closely related to land vertebrates, but its genome remains inscrutable. At 100 billion letters in length, uh, it's simply too unwieldy for a scientist to sequence. The coelacanth's more modest-sized genome, about the same size as our own, is yielding valuable clues about the genetic changes that allowed tetrapods to flourish on the land. So we were interested in what changes accompanied the transition onto land, and we addressed that in two ways. We looked at genes that had been lost in tetrapods, and we looked at which regulatory elements had changed in tetrapods. And what we could see was that genes related to smell, to immunity, um, to limb development, and also to salt excretion, the urea cycle, had changed a lot. Although its genome offers some tantalizing answers, we anticipate that further study of the coelacanth's immunity, respiration, physiology, and more will lead us to critical insights about how some vertebrates adapted to life on land while others remained creatures of the sea.